Hello, welcome to this very special edition of the Pace Report. We're reporting live here at Birdland Jazz Club here in New York City for the official reopening. As you might know, here in New York City for the last 15 months, it's been helter-skelter for a lot of the restaurants and jazz venues like Birdland to operate due to the fact that national guidelines and state guidelines providing people to congregate as well as musicians were very, very strict. This week is very special because this famous jazz club reopened to the public. And what better way to kick off these festivities is a pianist who's been doing and working the hardest during the pandemic, Emmett Cohen. Now Emmett Cohen has done some very important things during this pandemic. He has a very successful television show called Live at Emmett's Place, which streams live from his living room in Harlem, where he's featured some of his important friends in the music game as well as icons, and it streams to hundreds of thousands of viewers every single week. Also, he has a very important record, his debut for Mac Avenue Records, titled Future Stride, in which he pays tribute and honor to some of the great stride piano players. And it features some great guest appearances from saxophonist Melissa Aldana and the great Marquis Hill trumpet. Tonight we sit down and we reflect on these last 15 months, how he's been able to stay motivated and perform globally, especially in a time when a lot of the clubs were closed, as well as we sit down and talk about the importance of stride piano and very important to the jazz idiom of black American music. So sit back, relax, and enjoy highlights of the reopening of Birdland featuring the Emmett Cohen Trio. Live here at Birdland, here on the Pace Report, here in New York City.
this is what, 12 years in the making. I promised you I was gonna interview you. We were gonna do stuff. Stuff happens. Tonight I'm here, I'm here for you. Been here for you since you started. Congratulations on everything. The brand new record. You really planned during this whole COVID time, during these last 14 months, and also the reopening of Birdland. How do you feel? It feels surreal. It really does. Um, and it's been, it's been one thing at a time. But then you look behind you and you say, wow, there's the record, there's, 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 there's COVID live in Emmett's place, there's Birdland, there's, we're going to Europe on Tuesday. Um, so it's, it's just been really exciting. And you know, one thing after the other, I'm just so grateful to be doing what I love to do and be sharing with uh, all the people who really need it. You know, Emmett, you were, you were about maybe a handful of musicians were blessed to go and travel amongst the time when countries just shut down. I mean, how were you able to do this? Well, people reached out. You know, they reached out to us. They said, will you come to Russia and do this tour? And, you know, I talked to the band. And they said, yeah, of course we'll go. This is, we're, we're supposed to be on the front lines. We're young. You know, I called Benny Green. I said, you know, would you, would you go on a tour like this? He said, man, you're on the front lines now. You, you're the ones that have to do that. You know, I've done that. I've, I've, I've taken, taken, taken risks as a young man through this music. And so, you know, this music heals, and that's what we learn when we go around and we play for people who haven't heard music in, you know, very many months or over a year, and we play those first notes and we get, you know, get a start to get a rapport and a vibe, you know, it, it's, it's healing, and that's what we do, we try to be healers and we try to um, just promote that positivity in the world, and wherever we get the opportunities, we take them. You know, Emmett, you did tell the audience tonight, you know, we are reliving or about to go through the Roaring Twenties again. Yeah. And it's so funny that you say that because if you look at the history of this music, Louis Armstrong, he played when this when when the first the first flu came through. And I'm looking at you guys, I'm looking at the correlation, and I'm like, gee. It was the music and the culture that got us through all of this. How do you feel about you now putting your mark in history moving forward? Well, I'm a big student of the history of the music. I love Louis Armstrong. I study his life. I study his, his music. I study the way he puts together a set. I study the Hot Five. But then also all the lineage, you know, you just take it all the way up through now and all the great musicians that we love, Cedar Walton, Herbie Hancock, uh, Fats Waller, um, you know, even even bands like Har Silver, and then you get on into the modern times, Wynton Marsalis. Um, there's so much out there. There's so much out there, and everyone just does their thing. And you know, I'm, I look at all that. I say, wow, it's vast. Let me learn about it, and then let me internalize it, and then let me just do my thing with my community. And that's what it's really about—the community. Community, right? Kyle, Kyle Poole, Russell Hall. And many others in my in my community: Evan Sherman, Joe Saylor, Brian Carter, Simon Pennicott, Godwin Louis, uh, Ruben Fox, Benny, Benny Benack. Benack. Yeah, hey, yeah we're on the same. <laughs> yeah. We're on the same page. We're Gemini's. We, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, this is interesting because your record, Stride For Back Avenue Records. This is you know coming out the gate with this label, and I'm glad that you decided to go back to the origins of the beginning of piano, which is stride. And I want you to explain briefly to my viewers why stride piano was very important to the manifestation of these jazz pianists moving forward. Well, it's it's comes from a time when we couldn't afford a band. And we couldn't pay for a, for a big band anymore to come in. Um, it was a birth, it was a style that was birthed in somebody's home in people's in people's apartments when they wanted to entertain uh, it was a style that came from the New Orleans ooh pa ooh pa ooh pa it came from the, the marching band you know and then it added that syncopation people like Jelly Roll Morton um, James P. Johnson Willie Lyon Smith Fats Waller um, Albert Ammons Mary Lou Williams they all had their own style Thelonious Monk had his own way he would play that uh, and it just is, is such a rich cultural um, 
staple of American music that stride the piano. And I think as a jazz musician, you have to go through that as a pianist or as any kind of jazz musician to really understand how the music developed to, to where it is now. And we're also at a point where it's a postmodern time and people aren't inventing new ways to play anymore. It's, you know, it's, 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 it's all been done. All the, all the ingredients are in the cabinet in the kitchen. It's how you take them and how you put them together. And so that's, that's been our goal, is to, to take the stuff that's there, to take the stuff that's inspired us for many, many years now, and try to put it together in a unique way, in a way that shows our community, that shows our togetherness, and inspires hope and justice. And to add, you know, this album, you have a special guest, Melissa Aldana, and you have Marquise Hill, and you also play some of your own originals on here too. What were you thinking about when you were going into the studio, how you were envisioning putting this album together? Well, I think that a lot of my time in the past years have been, have been playing with the jazz masters, like Ron Carter, George Coleman, Jimmy Heath, Jimmy Cobb, Tootie Heath, Benny Golson, um, many others, Sheila Jordan, Houston Person. These are people that I've had these relationships with and continue to have these relationships with who I've learned from. And I wanted to take all those lessons that we've learned and apply them to our generation, to, to our young masters, to Marquise Hill, Melissa Aldana, Russell Hall, Kyle Poole. And these are the people that are, that are, that are in our generation ready to create that stuff. So we take all the lessons we've learned and then we, then we apply them um, to our generation and try to move the music forward like that.
live and in its place. And this is the beautiful thing about this whole this whole transitioning of the COVID-19 pandemic. You and a couple of other people had to reinvent yourselves. And this television program is very, very important. One, because you reached out to the community. I'm talking about the elder statesmen of this music as well as the up and coming cats. And you form this language that people, every week you're getting new on new viewers. Was that what you were trying to do when you started this show? No, we, when we started, I got a call from a promoter friend uh, in Kansas. His name is Derek Kwan. He used to work at Jazz Lincoln Center. He said, hey, you were supposed to play here on March 22nd, 2020. Uh, I know you can't make it, obviously. Everything's canceled, but we'll give you the full fee if you play from your house and do a little live stream. You figure it out, whatever you want to do put something good into the universe. And I said, okay, that sounds good. Kyle Russell, you know, we got ourselves a gig. Put the phone, you know, it sounds like a Game Boy. <laughs> like an 8-bit, you know, it sounds like you can't even hear the bass or anything. Um, but people loved it because it was somewhere to go and somewhere to be together in a time when, when uncertainty ruled the day. And for us, you know, that was the, that was the greatest gift and it was this symbiotic thing. It was like these people needed not only the music, but, but somewhere to go and somewhere to be a part of a community. And we needed to play, and we needed to, re we needed to reach that, because that's what we do, that's what we're put on this earth to do. And so that was the beginning, and then, you know, I stayed up all night watching YouTube videos and how to stream, how to get better video quality, how to get audio quality, how to mic stuff, bought some equipment, um, and, you know, reached out to these people that we've been on tour for the past, you know, five, six, seven years with Christian McBride, with Herlin Riley, with Ollie Jackson, with uh, Russell and Kyle Bonsworth, with with Wynton Marsalis, with Bramford, and Joey Alexander, Cecile McLaren, so on. Kyle plays with, and so we've been out. We've been reaching people all all all, the, all these years, and so now it's our time. All these people know us. You know, we just we just got together and we just did it, and and, and it was a natural thing. It was a real natural thing. It wasn't like we ever planned to have 62 volumes. That's where we're at as a, this interview. And that's a good thing because now that means if anything should ever happen again, this is not going anywhere. You've already established something now that is going to carry on with you for the rest of your life. Do you tell other musicians that this is the way to go or do you think that other musicians are trying to find their way during this pandemic and trying to get back into the swing of things? I think that everyone needs to look in the mirror and just see what's right for them. You know, some people said, no, I don't want to stream. I like to play in front of live audiences, and that's totally respectable, and that's totally cool. You know, for us, we, we, we tried this thing, and we developed it, and uh, it worked for us, and we were able to play on yet another medium. You know, jazz exists in a lot of different places. It exists in a speakeasy where people are having drinks and kind of listening. It exists in dance halls where people are dancing. It exists in European classical halls. It exists over the radio. You know, it exists so many places. This is just another place where now, you know, the music is affecting people and doing what it's meant to do in the world. Emmett, you have had a tremendous time playing with the elder statesmen in this music. From Ron Carter to Sheila Joy, like we were talking about earlier. What is it now? Because you, you said this on the band stage, and a lot of other musicians your age are saying this too. There are a lot of musicians that are flocking to New York City now. There's this new transition. What do you suggest this new generation of musicians do? One, studying the music and also being able to play this music as well. Find your community. Everyone needs to find their community. This music is communal music. You're not meant to lock yourself in a practice room or lock yourself in, in, away and, and just practice your instrument. You're meant to bring it out into the community. You're meant to find the other people who you're friends with, who you want to communicate with, who you want to make music with and, and, and create something that's bigger than just yourself because the music is bigger than any one of us. And I think that's something that is really, really important. To find your community, find the people you love to play with. If you're a drummer, find your bass player who you connect with. And, and take it as far as you can. You and Russell been getting down for a while. <laughs> yeah, and Russell and Kyle been getting yeah, down for yeah, a while. Yeah. And, and, you know, we all play in different configurations. And then when we bring that back, it just informs us in a, in a new and different way. We all teach each other. Right. Tonight, very important, we introduced a young vocalist that is getting ready to, I guess, her foray. She's 17 years old. Johnny 
was the one when I interviewed him earlier. He was telling me about when you guys had recorded. Tell everybody who we're talking about. This is Anais Reno, and we made a record last year. Russell Kyle and I, they called us to, to, to make a record, and she did a beautiful selection of really Strayhorn and Ellington music. And we had a great vibe in the studio, and it's, it's, it's going to be incredible to watch the trajectory. Do you think, you think, or do you feel that you, because you've played with some vocalists, are you comfortable being in the companies, or do you like the role of just being a leader? Or being a leader, what are some of the things that you do with your band that you allow them to have freedom, but also you also have to give them some direction and steer the music how you want it to be? I think being a leader means that you know how to choose when to lead and when to follow. Because people have better ideas than you do. People have better ideas than I do. You know, you have to listen to what people are saying. And that's what accompanying is about. I, I always try to accompany as much as, as much as I can. And I think it's really, really important and also I love to accompany because I love to try to make somebody else sound better because what greater feeling is there to, to, to make someone sound better or feel better or uplift them in some kind of way and, and it's, it's a challenging thing it's a challenging thing to not do everything you know that comes to your mind but to do what serves the moment and that's what accompanying teaches you and that's what leadership teaches you those things kind of go hand in hand so being a being a great leader, I feel, really means that you know when when to listen and when to take other people's advice or other people's ideas, and then when to in, uh, insert and assert your own.
We are at uh, a very historic house of music. Um, tonight you were playing the reopening I mean, of this historic place called Birdland. What does Birdland mean to you as far as you coming to New York and playing? Because you just, you're from right over the bridge in New Jersey. But also, some of the historic jazz recordings that were recorded live out here are kind of like the blueprint of how a lot of these musicians like yourself are playing. What does this place mean to you? This place means everything to me. Birdland is named for the great Charlie Parker. Um, it's had a lot of locations, but on 52nd Street, of course, there is so much history. There's so many live albums made here. All of my heroes came through here. You just look at the pictures on the yeah. map. We're, 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 we're sitting here right in front of the great Ron Carter. Sir Ron Carter, yeah. You know, all of the people who have played here, it's just staggering. Um, you know, it's on the level of the Village Vanguard in terms of mystique and prestige and just the, the, the ethereal connection you get to the spirits when you play here. I mean, Charlie Parker's here somewhere informing what I do right. when I play. You know, I'm a student of Charlie Parker like every jazz musician should be. Or Art Blakey. Yeah. The, the monumental records he recorded here. Oh my God. You know, there's, it, there's so much history and you just have to take it in and be part of it and let it come through you and just try to be in that lineage, you know, but be in the present because that's what those guys would have done. They would have been in the present doing what they do. That'll do it again for this very special edition of The Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the famous Birdland Jazz Club here in New York City as part of the reopening festivities. I'd like to personally thank and congratulate the talented Emmett Cohen for his time. Make sure you go out and support his current Mac Avenue Records release, Future Stride, which is now available on iTunes as well as Amazon.com and CD Baby, as well as support him during his live tour, which he'll be doing here in the next couple of months. Also, I'd like to personally thank and congratulate the staff and management here at Birdland for their warm hospitality. For upcoming showtimes as well as reservations, please visit them online at birdlandjazz.com. Also, people, please, let's get these likes, shares, and subscribes to The Pace Report here on YouTube and Vimeo. Please visit my website, thepacereport.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. Thank you.